Come on down to Arachne's Smokehouse and get yourself a rack of ribs. Fresh and Buds now. Fresh and Buds. All right, folks, welcome back to yet another episode of Fresh and Buds. I'm your host, Tommy Fresh, and you are all my buds. And today we are joined once again by William Knuckles from the Table Pit. How's it going, my friend? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good. I mean, it's, been, it's a Heck wild yeah. week, to be honest. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. I'll have some words uh, for the buds at the end of this episode, maybe some words of encouragement, hopefully. We'll see what I conjure up in my brain, but it has been a wild week, um, yeah. you know, for a lot of reasons. It's, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just that time of year, I guess. <laughs> but yep, yep. Um, how, how are you doing? I, I know already asked, you, you said you're doing well, but it's been a minute since you've been on this channel. I've been on yours yeah. in a yeah. couple times, actually. <laughs> so, uh, me, how have I been doing, right? So the table pit. YouTube channel has kind of consumed my life over the last year in the best way possible. Flesh and Bud is a great hobby. Content creation, also a solid hobby. Probably a a less forgiving one, uh, (laughs) but a a great one that I've been enjoying a lot lately. Um, I guess since we've last talked on the Table Pit, we've been doing we've been doing new stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So we've been doing game shows, which you've been on a game show. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, yeah, those are great. I l- love doing them. They're just like over the camera in Discord game shows, and they've been great. Um, other than that, I've started doing a live call-in show with uh, Kevin Smurf Murphy, where we're trying to get a guest on each week, and then people can give their opinions about certain things. Like they can say something like count your blessings is a fun card. (laughs) And then we can talk about it for an hour or well, for probably like 15 (laughs) minutes. Uh, But we've been doing a call-in show where people can live call in and, and talk to us specifically about their opinions or whomever the guest is, they can talk to them. Um, And then other than that, probably, uh, the biggest thing that's been happening is I've been making these, I've been calling them project videos. Sure. I come up with an idea. Typically, you know, I'm working with other people I'm coming up with an idea. I come up with an idea and I build a thing. And these are more like comedy, youtube style videos, like yeah. 10 minute, 10 to 30 minute videos where I do things like the first one I did, which was earlier this year, which was surprising to me that I think someone pointed that out to me that it was this year, right? Uh, that I did the world's tallest deck box. Was that this year? I mean, time has was no that meaning. This year, oh, true, true. <laughs> Especially after COVID. I mean, we'll say that until we're dead. But after COVID, time has no me- meaning. So, uh, but I did like I made the world's tallest deck box so that I can have a seventy-five person game of UPF. Um, I did a Frank, what did I do? I made a playmat out of playmats. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I did a voiceover for that one. You did that. You were in that. you were in that, <laughs> Frank. Yes. Dude, okay, so the world saw the tech box 9 months ago. That feels like an eternity because I've been living day to day doing this um <laughs> YouTube editing stuff. Uh so I've just been building these wacky creations and those videos have been doing great and it seems like people really like them. Yeah, they're super cool, and you know, people always get excited when they come out, and and they're always talking about it and like, just like laughing about it, which is like a fun thing, right? It's nice to yeah. have people laughing, right? Like, mm-hmm. even like today, you know, I, I posted something on Blue Sky where you know it's not sentimental, but like, yeah, it's like I'm always trying to get a positive spin on stuff and like. I like yep. making people laugh as well. So I I really appreciate what you're doing. And I think it's just what the flesh and blood community, mm-hmm. or at least the content community needs. And yeah. you know, a few a few laughs, some like fun arts and crafts in a way. Like kind of, yeah. yeah it's it's like a, um, a nice amalgamation of everything. 
some some of them like a little controversial and not like super controversial like hey but like controversial in the sense that like one of them was uh i tried to see how many cards uh it would take to stop a bullet Mm -hmm. which (laughs) involved people uh, it involved at least thumbnails of people pointing guns at me and then uh i did a video recently where it was scratch and sniff flesh and blood cards see if you could see if people could guess what a flesh and blood card was by their smell and one of the cards was uh one of the characters uh feet oh okay (laughs) some people on reddit really really didn't like that but uh that aside um you know hey listen (laughs) (laughs) i'm not gonna get into the feet stuff with flesh and blood that it's it's a ongoing it's an ongoing thing. It's an ongoing theme. It's no. it's always going to be there no, in, in no, one no, way no, or another. That. It's just a matter of, of of how you interpret it. You know, it's there's, ar- there's already too many feet in flesh and blood. Yeah, too many. Yeah. Um, We're done. Had enough. But I uh, I, I do love it. Yeah. And the, the the gun one was certainly. I was like, whoa, what is William doing here? I saw this thumbnail, and you know, I'm not a gun guy. So I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna... a good guy either, which was crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was but, just, Hey, listen, it brings people in. They're like, what the heck is uh-huh. this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so one thing I didn't mention yet, and I haven't been doing as much of, which is surprising given the YouTube channel, the table pit is founded on. I wanted to see more. Well, all of my ideas are, I want to see more of this in the mm-hmm. flesh and blood community. And I wanted to see in person, upf gameplay footage on youtube and that's that's where the table pit, pit table pit came from was we were just trying to get that out in the world um they do well like they do fine and i enjoy making them they're very time consuming mm-hmm. and so what have i been up to lately is we're looking at restructuring it because it's very time consuming and I have all these other things that I like doing now, too, on the YouTube channel. And so I still want to give something to the people who are, like, definitely subscribed to see UPF stuff. Yeah. Uh, because that's that's just where we started from. And so what we're doing, I, I don't think I told you about this yet. I, what we're doing is, I think starting at the end of this month, we're going to be turning the gameplay videos of UPF into live streams on Sundays. And That's so awesome. Sundays, people could like tune in and watch us do a live stream of the gameplay, as opposed to us record a video, I edit it for sixty hours, and then put it on YouTube. Uh, instead of spending like two weeks of all my free time editing, we'll just have a VOD of people hanging out and playing UPF, which is the point of UPF to hang out and play UPF, and we'll put those up about once a month. I think is what we're gonna do. That'd be cool. I mean, yeah. I think people will really enjoy that, especially like on a Sunday, kind of winding down from the, the weekend, whether you went to a tournament or you're just, well, yeah. don't want to go to work the next day. And you're just like, I need something fun, relaxing and low stakes, which UPF kind of yeah. is just to yeah. watch and, and have people do. Do you, do you have a name for it yet? No, we're still working on the name and probably like the branding for it. Um, I mean, the original gameplays, we always just called the Table Pit videos because that's where mm-hmm. the Table Pit came from. And so we're we're working on that and we're working on on all the logistics for it. But that's that's the big upcoming thing. The new thing that I'm working on is changing the way our UPF videos work. Well, I'm excited to to watch and maybe one day. I don't know if I can. You're not that far away. You could totally be on it. (laughs) Uh, Maybe if I make it down there. We need to get worlds in uh, in my neck of the woods next year. That would be really neat. East East Coast US, they could do that. I would listen. I would love to actually go to a worlds because I don't think I've been to one. No, yeah, it's been it's been San Jose, uh, Barcelona, and I've not been to one either. Well, we know the next one's in North America, so it's just. We've had one on the West Coast of North America. The next one's going to be in East Coast, right? Yeah, I can't believe they're putting it in New Jersey again. <laughs> they just <laughs> want to help me out. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, now, speaking of UPF, you know, this is a format that they made clear that they do want to support, right, with things like Round the Table. And we're a little bit removed from the release of Round the Table. So as someone who 
actively plays UPF, I was wondering what is kind of the the state of the format right now. Do you do you find that you're getting people ask, asking you questions about it? Are you finding uh, maybe even some older UPF videos that you made uh, getting comments randomly or something like that, or just in your everyday kind of observations? How do you think the UPF format's going? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, so the thing about the thing about UPF, if you don't know what UPF is, UPF is Flesh and Blood's multiplayer format. It's you know four players, probably probably about four players, right, sitting around a table, and you all just hit on each other uh, in in the game. <laughs> Not like you know. Anyways, so it's uh, there's a there's a link. It's an official format of Flesh and Blood. So there's a link on their website that talks about it. Um, UPF, like you ask how it's doing. I think the first thing people would probably think of because this is a competitive game and we're competitive people is the meta and the meta is, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, it's not, it's not, there's nothing that's like super broken. And if you wanted to play things that were super broken, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of ways to be super broken in UPF. So like, that's not a big problem. Most of the time when people are playing that I hear about, it's like blitz decks, they just mm-hmm. grab precons and are playing them, or they take their CC deck and remove one of each card. Um, so the meta for UPF has been fine, as far as I've heard. Um, other than that, you, we were talking about round the table, and round the table, like that's a big point, right? So like that was when LSS teamed up with Delirian Community College, and they made a. Uh, it's just an entirely contained product that basically just allowed people to play UPF um, right out of the box, and. So where UPF is, is before, like a large part of my metric is like a feeling around on the community on, you know, Reddit or Blue Sky or uh, through Discord. And it felt like I'd hear a whisper about UPF once a month, once every couple of months Mm -hmm. before RTT came out. And then when it did... I feel like I'm getting a message about once a week or I'm hearing okay. something. Yeah. Pretty frequently about, you know, Hey, it's nothing big. It's like, Hey, I had a question about this hero. How does it fit into UPF or I play riptide. Is my play group going to be upset if I bring drone of brutality because of fatigue? Um, or occasionally like I'll hear uh, people be like, Hey, you know, uh, we had less people than we expected at our armory. So we just played a UPF tonight. Uh, and I've heard, I heard some of that too. It's not, it's not a lot like for a supported format in flesh and blood. It's so little. It's like the player base for blitz compared to CC is, is a similar comparison to like the player base of UPF to blitz. Like it's actually, I feel like it's a pretty big drop. There's not as many people playing it. Um, and I, I don't feel like it's necessarily on an in, like an incline either, because I feel like people are coming off of UPF as often as they're coming onto it. But that's just, you know, turnover happens in everything, and I think that's fine. Um, one thing I, I will say that is, I think if they come out with another round the table, we'll see another bump like that. Yeah. But I'm curious as whether or not we even see that, because unlike in Barcelona... Worlds 2023. There was not an officially uh, an official LSS Flesh and Blood UPF side event at yeah. Osaka, which is kind of interesting. I know, and they had like some commoner stuff. I'm not really sure what else they were doing. Uh, now, this could be a cultural thing. I'm not sure if. They, oh, I guess that's true. You know the the Japanese player base is necessarily ready for the UPF because it's a relatively new market for them. Um, I don't think they want to give up on it because uh, like we see with other game, other games, like the, the tabletop stuff is the lifeblood of the game. Now there is an argument to be said that that's kind of where blitz is going to live, right? That, and then you can just like, Oh, maybe I play tabletop blitz and then maybe I go to a skirmish with it. If I want to, you know, get a little sweaty, uh, with my blitz deck, so it, it's very interesting. I, I'll be interested to see because I think the round the table seemed to be a success. 
I bought it. I had a ton of fun uh, yeah. playing it. Um, and, you know, it's a cool way to give uh, classes cards that maybe don't really need it. Now, it does stink when you have to feel like you have to buy a whole box to get it for a competitive deck. But yeah, yeah, it does stink. But, yeah. But yeah. it's a good reason to, hey, maybe I can play some UPF with some friends that don't play Flesh and Blood yet. Yeah. Well. So I play I play Guardian mm-hmm. in CC or in the competitive formats. And uh when I got the round of the table box, what I did was after playing with it a couple of times, is I took the Bravant deck and I tore it to pieces uh so I can get the different cards I wanted out of it because there were some cards in there that are just now competitive staples. And uh then for the rest of the box I just added in a different I just added in a different blitz deck. And oh. I just I said that that's the box now. It's just different. I picked another like slower setup turn deck. I forget which one it was. Um, and just said, okay, this is my round the table box now. Uh, so we can still kind of have is it's a different experience. And obviously, Bravant was made specifically for that. But mm-hmm. like, I didn't feel like I uh, lost out by spending seventy dollars on the product just for uh, civic duty civic boots. Uh, even though, uh, because I, I still have the other three decks. I have the play mat. I got the box. It all came in. I, I can play with that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great. I hope we get another one personally. Um, and yeah, I, I like, I think you can get a lot of value out of it anyway. Um, especially, I, think, I, I also feel like LSS is like, we're, we're talking about like, how UPF is feeling, and I'm I'm calling out LSS for not having a side event at Bars <laughs> at a uh, at Osaka, mm-hmm. but uh, I they are I feel like supporting UPF indirectly a lot. Yeah, like when heavy hitters came out, that was specifically like a you can draft this uh, as a UPF draft like pretty easily. Um, the uh, the little boxes that they've been coming out with each set. They've been, other than Miss Fail, Miss Fail wasn't like that, but they've been coming out with boxes where you, it's much like Round the Table where you get a, you know, four pre-cons and a play mat all in a little box. Like, they have one for um, Rosetta. We're going to get another one for the next set. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I feel like they're like, they understand UPF as a smaller format. They've pushed it into the public knowledge every like everybody who's really entrenched in flesh and blood i feel like they know what it is and or maybe have played a game uh and i think that's as much as they're doing right now and they're just going to like drip feed a little stuff to people and let the community grow on its own which i think is completely fine yeah and i feel like every set has like i mean some cool majestics right and even like rares and commons that you're like Oh, this would actually, I mean, sure, I don't want to play it in CC or anything like that, but it might be pretty cool in, in my my UPF deck. Yeah, true. True. Well, true. I truce, think it's in play truce, and everything, but. Yeah, Truce is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I'm so upset. I'm so upset it's good because I just I just wanted to buy, like, eight of them uh, mm-hmm. and just make sure to, like, ask people before a game, hey, do you want to swap out a blue for this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, the Truce is, is really sweet. So, I don't know. I'm excited to see where UPF goes and just other casual formats. I, I know that uh, last week Taylor and I had talked about some, yeah. and then actually shout out to Greg, AKA dark Prentice. Uh, he pointed out that um, I, uh, another content creator, uh, maybe another podcast out of SoCal was, was doing this, this format called crucible, the 60 card singleton uh, kind of, 1v1 like format. I think that's really cool because Interesting. because I think like the theory is, right, when when it's singleton you you can't have these repetitive powerful things. Right? You have to fi- you have to stretch to find gameplay loops that work for your deck. Like you yeah. got to stretch stretch it a little thinner. Your deck is less so, th- so I, I know I know where you're going with this because mm-hmm. uh, I I've heard you talk about it and I completely agree. Is I I well I don't completely agree. I want to test it more and I haven't tested it any. But I think one thing that would be really cool for UPF and I'm definitely going to try it is the classic 
like commander angle mm-hmm. of 100 card singleton or maybe just 60 card singleton yeah even 40 card singleton is really interesting because unlike commander we don't have lands uh yeah. and so like i don't know 40 cards is enough um and it's neat because with flesh and blood you're like ah but the you know the consistency is a large part of flesh and blood and it's like it's still a large part oh yeah because you pitch cards to the bottom of your deck you are planning the rest of your deck <laughs> I don't know. I, I think that I think Singleton sounds really interesting and it is definitely something I'm going to be trying in the future some more, like trying UPF Singleton games before I start like saying, Hey, you like UPF? Try it with Singleton. It's better. Like I don't know that yet, but I really hope it is because that sounds really interesting. Well then you just get your little arsenal of, of decks and then yeah. like, oh, bust them out. So Yeah. That's the best way to get people into exactly. into stuff. Now Let's get to the fresh faves. And we got two special fresh faves this episode, folks. We roll out the red carpet for William, in case you didn't realize. The first is the My regular heart. one, <laughs> Rosetta. We want to know your favorite cards out of Rosetta. First, oh, who was your favorite hero out of Rosetta? Oh, my gosh. Um, so I think Verdance is the most, is the one I'm going to gravitate to towards first like i just her the different kind of decks you can build for her in uh limited because most of the time when i'm thinking about individual sets like this i'm thinking about limited um uh i think i i just like the kind of decks that she can build like she has that like wizard burn deck where it's just i'm a wizard but i'm at 20 life and then i just play zap at you every turn and win that way which is kind of funny and then also she has like a more grindy like earth base uh build too. Um her CC deck is very interesting and fun to play against, fun to play as. I think I think Verdance, yeah. Yeah. Verdance is a great great answer. I I I found myself enjoying her quite a bit when I played Limited. Now oh, I will say Asilio is a ton of fun, uh, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone thinks Asilio is fun. Yeah. Uh or at least funny. So uh you know what? I think you could be both. That's like the beautiful thing. Fun and funny. <laughs> fun and funny. Fun in funny. What is your favorite weapon out of Rosetta? Um, well, I know it's not my favorite weapon. Uh, hmm. but I think I think my favorite weapon might be a Cilio's weapon, right? Volzar. Yeah, that one's really neat because like it asks. I think it asks more of you than necessary. All of them have like an interesting like condition they're asking of you to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically involving the element, which I think is very important after. Uh, we lived through Rosetta Thorn for the longest time. <laughs> um, but I think I think Asilios asks him a very interesting question. Uh, uh, just just in the sense where it's like, we want you to play a lot of lightning cards and then do something with it, which is just a very interesting for me. And it you you can like build your whole deck around it. And, and even if you don't build your whole deck around it, like your turn by turn plays are like based on it. Uh, I think I think the whole like leaning into the surge mechanic with your weapons on both heroes, but I think it happens in Asilio more. Is just that's just fun. That's just yeah. silly. I pump this up enough, and you don't do anything about it, so I get bonus benefits. That's great. I love that. I think it's also the the biggest lore win, not lore win the set from Magic. The lore win, <laughs> flavor win in. You had the, me there for a second. <laughs> In in the set, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot. It's a very flavorful set, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. the the fact that it's Volzar the Lightning Rod, and every time you play, awesome. it's absorbing the lightning like yeah. a lightning rod would, which is it's it's so good. And then it's you're so just good. slinging it back at somebody, which is so so neat. Like I mean, I mean, Starfall. I'm not literally throwing the card at the table or like <laughs> making it fall on the table. That's not fun. No. Uh, light being a lightning rod, that's fun. It's very very cool. What's your favorite equipment? Oh, frick. Okay, so uh, I knew this question comes up next because that's the order of the questions. Uh, <laughs> my favorite equipment uh, from the set is probably... Um, it's probably... Okay, from a gameplay perspective, it's probably Flash of Brilliance because one thing I like to do in that other card game we just mentioned, Magic the Gathering is I like playing blink decks where you like put something on the field that does a thing. Mm-hmm. 
And then what you do is you find ways to remove it from the field and put it back on the field. So it keeps doing that thing over and over again. Very similar to what um, some Aurora and Asilio decks do, where they take Gone in a Flash and they blink it multiple times and hit you multiple times with it. Flash of Brilliance does that with your uh, instance, or your, well, I say instance, some of their instance. Uh, it does that with your auras. Like it'll send it back and forth, put it in your hand, and then you can play it again. And I think getting that. That building value, I I love that. I love that. Uh, I will say, aesthetically, though, the best card in the set, uh, hands down, hands down on the table, is Four-Fingered Glove. Oh, yeah. Because that card is so funny to me. It's so freaking funny. Uh, just, just the flavor of, well, it was a Five-Finger Glove, and then you played <laughs> whatever this game was too many times, and you missed, you missed and you caught yourself. Uh, that card's great. Oh yeah, I mean that the yeah. whole cycle of of the generic. Oh, they're funny. Equipment. They're funny, and I love them. Yeah, and finally, kind of. What's your kind favorite? Of. You know, card you throw in your deck from Rosetta? Ten foot tall and bulletproof. Oh, I yeah. want ten. I think flavor wise, it should say you can have ten of this card in your deck. You should have ten foot tall and bulletproof <laughs> in your deck. If you if you pack one, pick one. You have to pick it. It's required. Uh, that card is awesome. Oh, yeah. It is just awesome. It is huge, is what it is. And it's uh, not even bad, right? Like, you just set up, no. like, especially in Limited, you just set up a win with yeah. it. Yeah. I So, like, in Limited, I was hearing about at the world premiere, where people were seeing this card for the first time, were playing 10-foot tall and bulletproof, and then I think they were... Uh, 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 the somersaulting it back into their hand and then playing it again on the same turn. Like they gave it go again and they got to play it oh again. And so they hit somebody for 20 damage. Oh my. That's great. Well, I know um, <laughs> uh, active Discord user in, in the Buzz Discord, Rabbit, at the world premiere, had 10 foot tall and also had Germinate. So Rabbit was uh, setting up the Germinate into the okay. 10 foot tall after. So sending like oh. whatever. Oh. You do like ten rune, rune ch yeah. twelve rune chance <laughs> into ten foot tall. That's another way to do twenty damage in one turn. Yeah. Holy frick. Yeah. That's a lot. It was, it was really neat. It was really neat. <laughs> oh now, my gosh. That's a great answer. Great. Now this is a question that we started adding to the Fresh Faves. Uh and we'd never asked you this um from the last time you were on. What mm -hmm. class and talent would you be in the world of Wraith? Uh, generic. Okay. So, okay. I think, <laughs> I think I want to be the guy on the, I think what I would be is the guy on the ponder card. Like, I think that's just who I'd end up being in the world of Wraith. Okay. Yeah. Just, just, just sitting there thinking. Um, I don't know. I feel like. Uh, most likely like I, I you look at all the other like the classes like the devotion and like how much effort is being put into uh being the best you can be as a hero uh in the world of wraith and it's like no i don't think i could hack it as a as a wizard i don't think i could do it as a warrior merchant probably most likely okay i mean if if Cavden could be a feisty local i can be a feisty local so yeah. i think that's fine yeah that's generic Generic. Generic hey, or merchant. Generic. <laughs> <laughs> Which generic's funny because it covers both class and talent here in this yeah, situation. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Uh, you can Ta be. Probably, probably talentless. Otherwise, I'd say bard. Bard's not a talent, but it's also like you'd have to be talented. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. I'll bit. go I'll go with non-talented because I'm not a bard. You, okay. <laughs> non-talented, generic. I always wanted to do a, I, I think I've mentioned this before. I always wanted to do like a. Well, like a series or like a, 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 sh like a offshoot podcast called the, the zero talent heroes or whatever, the non-talented heroes, non-talented like, heroes. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like talking. Nobody I mean, write that down. He got that. Everybody That's write it. that down. I mean, no. it's kind of the similar vibe to the O3 drop cast, right? Like, cause you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Self digs. No, that's great. Um, that's but, great. Yeah. Anyway, worlds that's that's for when you make a flesh of blood podcast because this is a weed podcast right <laughs> yeah yeah i'm never gonna <laughs> beat the allegations i don't think 
I'm never going to beat him. That you know, one day, one day. Listen, I I respect everybody's you know uh, proclivities uh, in the world. <laughs> But uh, this is a flesh and blood con- uh, podcast. Oh my god! Now oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. tripping sorry, over my sorry, words. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. And speaking of flesh and blood, the world sure. championship was this past weekend oh. in Osaka, Japan, and boy, oh boy! Now, for us East Coasters in the United yeah. States, we did have to watch it at pretty odd hours of the night, or just watch the vods. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a lot of fun. This was a great oh, tournament. Oh, it was great. And yeah. a lot happened, but I figured, well, actually, I didn't even figure. This was William's idea. This is actually now William's podcast. It's oh, yours. yeah, yeah, yeah. Make this sure you podcast. upload every Thursday at noon. Welcome to the uh, Non-Talented <laughs> Heroes podcast. I'm here <laughs> Wait, with Tommy Fresh. Wait, don't change Fresh. your name. <laughs> oh, Frank. <laughs> um, this was William's idea that we did a world's fresh fave of the different stuff we saw in the coverage. Because oh, yeah. as as, you know cool kids like us we were watching from home base so you know that's our best frame of reference for worlds so Mm -hmm. william world's fresh faves coverage edition hashtag graphic on screen fresh get your editor to put a graphic on screen uh brought to you by blue (laughs) shoe no i'm kidding um No, 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 no. i don't have sponsors they're all fake um who is your favorite hero that you saw on stream or watched on stream brought to you by news blue chew um (laughs) see uh my favorite hero or deck at least that i saw that i didn't i didn't put two and two together which i should have uh was seeing michael hamilton's cyb new Mm -hmm. counter busting's new i like playing disruptive decks i already said that i like playing guardian but i like just playing disruption in a format like messing with other people's numbers. And so CYB knew was really interesting to me. And then uh, he on his podcast talked about how he came up with the deck, which I thought was neat, where he was watching a game where it was new versus count your blessings, Arachne. And okay. he was watching, he was watching the game and he was like, what if both? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. And then he put CYB in new and made top eight of worlds. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it definitely has been done before on Talishar, but like I hadn't seen it done well. And watching it work out was like super cool. Uh, I, I loved watching Michael Hamilton's games. Yeah. Well, we'll talk a little bit about CYB in a, yeah, yeah, <laughs> in yeah. a few minutes. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every hero can technically play this card. <laughs> sure. So there's probably yeah. been some version I've of seen every cyb year. uh uh aurora listen don't do it but it, do it. you can uh, you could do a cilio <laughs> you get to actually just start discarding them and no don't do that either uh, <laughs> and then i don't know what the win con is but they, you can do it you get um, to hang out that's that's your win you get to hang out um <laughs> so my my f- favorite yeah what was yours well it was a cilio uh, Alexander Vore on Asilio. Oh right? yeah, that Al- was sick. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, Alexander Vore is is I would say a legendary wizard player in this game. Has been has been playing wizard at a very playing high level. Kano and doing well with it before anybody else. Oh yeah, for for as yeah. long as I've been playing, if not yeah. longer, uh, uh, Alexander Vore has been doing it so well, and to see. Him play Asilio in day two. Now, uh, the main game that I watched was um, unfortunately lost, but it was a close game. It's just like that deck is so much fun. And yeah, yeah at some times it could feel like it, it can feel pretty oppressive, but where other oppressive decks like Zen, like, like pre ban Zen, um, that was always oppressive and like there is a certain amount of variance in the zen deck that like yeah it could it could falter it could not do the thing yeah but it was pretty consistent to be honest especially with traverse asilio is is the glass cannon though because yes if this doesn't work out like you're gonna totally sputter and i think it's just so exciting i like decks like that 
Yeah. You know, where you can do something really cool. And like, like you were talking about with flash of brilliance, yeah. bouncing your sigils and drawing cards. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it was so much fun to watch and just like to see that hero kind of get like shown on, on the major yeah. stage was really neat. Yeah. I thought, I thought, I don't know. We've said it. Asilia is fun. And watching that game was also fun because it's being piloted by somebody who knows what they're doing and their deck is very good. Uh, so if you're as interested in Asilio as we are hyped for it, that's definitely a game to watch. Oh yeah. Now, what was your favorite weapon to see on stream? Easy. I knew the answer to this immediately. My favorite weapon to see on stream day one, round five, Max Klein on Florian with Scepter of Pain. Ooh. <laughs> now was that boarded in? You think? I believe so. Yeah. Um, I forgot exactly who he was playing against, but here's the combo. You play Channel the Millennium Tree, mm -hmm. which at the start of your turn amps three. Then you hit him with the, the wand that deals one arcane damage plus the amp three and then creates rune chance equal to how much you hit him for. Yeah. And so it could be a one resource deal four damage, create four rune chance. Mm-hmm. Which is, okay, okay, so you have to play the Millennium Tree as well. So that ends up being four resources and a card. But, like, if Millennium Tree gets to stick around, then you can do that multiple turns, two turns, three turns. That's super good. I will say it's easy to pitch Earth cards in Florian because you have yes. your, your <laughs> arm piece. You have the weapon itself. Yeah. It's, it's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was super exciting to see that. Uh, get played out and when i saw it i was like man i just i missed that i've the one thing i thought worlds was super cool about is that i thought i knew what the meta was and that what the decks were in the meta and people were pulling out just some crazy stuff and that was super cool yeah uh your favorite weapon my favorite weapon so this is gonna be a boring answer but i want to uh, <laughs> kind of actually like highlight this card it's starfall and true we saw a lot of starfalls right we a lot did of see we saw a lot of starfall activation too yeah like it exactly was, it was like every turn so starfall i want to highlight as this is like the the such a like elegant fix to the room blade like repetitiveness here is a weapon that you have to do in the middle of your turn no matter what if you want to do it like you can't you can't just rely on finishing your turn like rosetta thorn right yeah or, or yeah. Uh, reaping blade or whatever like this makes you think, thinking about your sequence and i just kind of i just love yeah that aurora was doing well Right, I think Aurora is a pretty healthy Runeblade deck. Uh, a lot in the way that, like, you know, the other Lightning Hero, Ocilio, is pretty healthy. Do you have a... It, it, it reminds me of um, Emberblade. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of Fi's weapon, because you have to slap it in the middle of your turn. Yep. It has go again. Well, the other one... Oh, the, both of them have go again conditionally. This one has extra damage conditionally. Um, but it is cheaper. I, I, I It reminds me of it uh Fi's weapon and uh and so I don't I don't know. I think I think the play pattern is interesting because there's definitely turns you could take where you're like, I don't have the extra resource, I'm not gonna starfall. And then there's turns where you have the extra resource so you starfall. It's like it's kinda interesting how it weaves in because it only is one resource as compared to two on on Fi's weapon. Uh I think it's pretty neat actually. Yeah, it almost reminds me of the the chain days, right? Like you had oh, to yeah. like build out this kind of turn. Like when is your chain activation? Yada yada yada. So it's pretty neat. Now, what was your favorite equipment on stream? Uh my favorite equipment on stream was two pieces of equipment. It was watching Hecking Mercy's Aurora with Aether, Iron Weave, Crown of Dominion. <laughs> and I had to have someone explain it to me because I was like, why the frick would you run Crown of Dominion? And it's like, oh, well, it makes a gold token. Yep. Sure. Aether Ironweave says, if you hit somebody, gain two resources. Sink that into your gold, and you just turn two pieces of equipment into a block one draw card. Yeah. Which in Aurora, 
you know, a card's value could like fluctuate from like, you know, four damage to six damage just by adding an extra card to your hand. Um, which is which is super cool. And seeing that little that little combination sneak in to some of the top eight matchups was like super cool to me. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, and they both have go again, so that is yeah. is Pretty important for the arc lightning <laughs> yes. turns. Yeah, you can, when, when she does the arc lightning and you deal arcane every time you go again, well, you get go again off of the Aether Iron Weave because it is an action with go again. And then you get the gold token, which is an action with go again. Uh, it's, oh, it just, it just works. It just works. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Um, my favorite has to be Face Purgatory to kind of really see it in action. Yeah. Since it yeah. got released. You know, as a huge fan of Scowling Fleshbag, mm-hmm. I I kind of like this kind of effect, this kind of threatening. You, you know that they can use it, right? Almost yeah. like a good room yeah. play deck that's well built should be able to use mm-hmm. it at any time. That threat of activation on Face Purgatory is so, like... Threatening. <laughs> it's not just It's not just discard a card, which is debilitating. Yeah. Like, to, to play around having a you're the one with pummel in your hand and mm-hmm. you have to play around them that feels demoralizing but then they also draw a card yeah frick sometimes i i feel like in some of the games i've been playing people have been activating it when they wanted an arsenal yeah. they're like oh i can block with these two cards and then i can get an extra card to arsenal at the end of my turn and it's like oh it's so good it's just so good it is it is it, it was it's such a like nice buff for the room but Rune Blade class, which is Rune neat. Babe class. Rune Babe class. Shout out Anna. Um, what is your favorite card you saw on stream? Uh, uh, you first. Oh God. Um. Well, to be honest, I mean it's a sigil of brilliance because. Oh. I mean, like, yeah. if, if if that was my favorite hero to to watch on stream, I mean sigil of brilliance. And initially, when I saw that card, I'm like, okay, it's going to be it cool, draw a card. whatever. And then like, it's gonna you be see cool. it do the thing, you're like, oh, man, this is such a cool card. Like, yeah. Just what it does in that deck is so neat. The, the blink effects where you get to like pop it back into your hand and play it again and draw a card. And it's just, it's just so neat. I've had someone walk me through a couple of combos you can do with it, and they are very funny to pull off i i love it that's super cool uh the card that i thought was my favorite at worlds here you go here you go you getting your thumbnail ready uh uh Mm -hmm. is uh count your blessings oh boy Oh boy! What? Oh, this is actually a great pivot point to our next (laughs) subject count your blessings so uh i have i assume this yeah. means that we're going to be maybe on different sides of the aisle here. Maybe, so, maybe. Yeah. So County Blessings, uh, for those of you who don't know, did win the tournament. It was a Enigma County Blessings deck against Mercy, who was on. Now, Gregor's won uh, against Mercy, who was yeah. on Aurora. And, uh, and Aurora did have some tech for County Blessings, but uh, she admitted, I think, on Blue Sky that, you know, didn't have a lot of reps into enigma with yeah. count your blessing yeah yeah yeah. it's just tough um, it's hard to get reps into everything mm-hmm. so there's a lot of decks yeah so people people are mm-hmm. talking right this this As is they a, do it's a like let's lay out the facts here it is a beatable card right? yeah it is beatable yeah. there's plenty of tech for it i've beaten it i've been beaten with it been beaten with it beat, been beaten when i had it yeah, yeah so <laughs> yeah so i <laughs> That's the fact. It is a generic, so it can go into any deck. So it is a little bit hard to predict if your opponent is on it. Now, there's certain decks, like as we said earlier, that cannot play it reliably in a yeah. good way. Yeah. In a, yeah. In a competitive fashion. And yeah. And I think the other thing is some people will find it not fun to play against or even not fun to play. And then there is also the looming idea that it's not fun to watch on stream. So, okay. I, I think that's where I'll start first. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be talking about the armory level or even like the skirmish pro quest 
uh, Road to Nats level. Like, at the higher levels of play where you're watching your favorite people on TV throw the coolest cards in the world, I hecking, I, I love Count Your Blessings. <laughs> it was awesome. Dude, the finals, I was, I was on my couch, leaned in this close the entire time watching the game. They had me on every single word that was going on in that game. I was so wrapped up. It, every turn had like, 17 decision points and they were all like working off of each other and it was going back and forth and there was so much interaction going on between the two players it was hype i was so in it and just the whole finals was great both players played amazing i enjoyed watching it so much and i was talking about it to my locals because again it's the card of the month everyone's talking about it um and one of my locals said uh, that they feel like a part of the reason people are getting upset watching it on stream is, and I don't mean to dog anybody about it, but this is just like a thing. It's like, it takes a certain level of experience in flesh and blood. This is like a rough quote. Uh, it takes a certain level of experience in flesh and blood to appreciate a game like that, right? Sure. Like, if you're watching somebody throw four damage and then they block four damage, four damage and then they block four damage, it looks like nothing's happening because the life totals aren't doing this. If anything, you want them to go down and they're going up right now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's, it's not exciting. It's not for football fans. Like it's, it's, it's like modern boxing as best as I understand modern boxing, where it's like, you're whittling them down. You're playing this slow grindy game and you're, it's a war of attrition for every single point of life. Like it, the game came down to being pretty dang close to mm -hmm. like uh, and and just in that sense, it's like a, a little bit on either side. What the game would have looked completely different or we could have had a different winner. Um, and so I think that's the thing about counter blessings and slow decks like that. And the reason I thought it was my favorite card scene at Worlds was just how it had it. It made the games have a ton of interaction in them and back and forth. and. Now to talk about on a more casual level, I personally do not think about the length, uh, the time it takes to play a game of Flesh and Blood when I think about fun in Flesh and Blood. Mm -hmm. I I would sit and play an old mirror, mirror match uh, where after a card goes to your graveyard, it goes to the bottom of your deck every day of the week. Uh, <laughs> the idea being just, I want to see, I just want to see a lot of back and forth, a lot of trading back and forth. What I don't really enjoy is watching, I think of like an old Phi mirror match where it was like, uh, Phi draws their four cards face down because they're not going to look at them because they're not going to block with them. While the other Phi does 30 damage yeah. and then Phi picks up his hand, he does 30 damage and then they, Looks like they Blitz play the game Viscerai, out. Three right? Yeah, yeah, Blitz yeah. Viscerai was exactly that way where it was just like, or even like to an extent sometimes it was like Blitz Reinar turn zero and I've played the deck before. Mm -hmm. uh, you just hit them with um, 28 uh damage and they have no cards in hand and so they block with seven points of their equipment and die yeah. uh i don't find those games very very interesting because there's not a lot of back and forth there's not a lot of thought you just like play the cards in the best way possible and win uh instantly yeah so i like counter blessing for that reason i also understand <laughs> i'm in the minority of that and that i'm gonna have fun regardless what cards are in flesh and blood and so I typically take my opinion of counter blessings out of the argument when people are talking about counter blessings because when a lot of people, as you were saying, is they don't have as much fun with it themselves. Like when they're playing at their armory and their opponent, you know, that one guy who wins all his armories brings the deck that won worlds counter blessing Enigma, and then yeah. uh, he's just gonna win, and all his games are gonna go to time. Yeah, I mean, so. <sighs> Uh, it's this is a complicated one because I d definitely agree with you that it does present a lot of interesting decisions and like at the high level, yeah, it is certainly at the highest level, yeah, it is certainly a really interesting deck choice and an interesting deck to navigate, right? Like if you are uh, playing against it and playing the deck as well, you know, there's always going to be slow grindy decks in the game, and I think that's pretty important. 
you know, even there was a, a, a buddy of mine just started playing and kind of like messaged me. He's like, this is the one thing I like, I might have a qualm with, with the game. Cause he's really loving it. Um, it was like, it's fatigue. I'm like, well, it's a pretty important piece of the yeah. puzzle here. Yeah. Uh, because if, if it doesn't exist, then it's just. Pew, 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 yeah. It's pew. like, a, it's like a whole third of the like meta triangle is like slowing the game down to your level or you know so, otherwise it's just whoever makes the best numbers that you just play that deck yeah exactly so you know i don't mind this existing the the issue and like all right i'm i'm someone who would never play it sure and i'm someone that definitely doesn't enjoy playing against it with certain decks right like yeah that's fine uh i don't like I like a nice grindy deck, like grindy match, but yeah, but you you play a hero that doesn't have a weapon. <laughs> yeah, uh, what are you talking <laughs> ahead, about? Ahead, it's no. a little thing called endless arrow. Uh, oh, frick! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the best weapon in the game. It if it coming. doesn't hit, discard your weapon. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, discard your weapon and then get it back later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, actually, you do have ways to get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh um, my goodness, remembrance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. My, uh, th- I think, and I don't want to spend too much time on Count Your Blessings. We got, we got, oh, we got a whole so new to set to talk about, but. And I talk about a lot. <laughs> not, a do- not a ton, but like, no, no, no. Count Your Blessings is, I think, the generic status of it makes it yeah. such a difficult card to experience in the game. And I think, like, they talk about it all the time. That's why they did the big book ban. It's like we want good games of flesh and blood, and I do believe you can have good games of flesh and blood um, if you know, like a certain card is a, it's like always going to be an option for a deck, right? Now, count your blessings is, is an option for every deck. However, you know, I feel like it could be so experience breaking if if like Reinar count your blessings shows up, right? And you're like, okay, I have to prepare for this Reinar match. And then Reinar goes, um, okay, before your arsenal, count your blessings. And you're like, oh, no, this is not going to no. be a good time. Uh, it- uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you a little bit. Uh, when uh, we first heard about counter blessing decks being like an actual thing, mm-hmm. like we, we knew what the card was. And then I was hearing from some pro players that like, oh, this might be a deck to be watching out for. And mm-hmm. I was like, wait, really? One person brought up to me that Counter Blessings Asilio is a thing, which is terrifying on paper if Asilio runs Counter Blessings. And that's a real deck because when you square up against Asilio, you're like, okay, are they going to combo me, <laughs> fatigue me, or aggro me? Yeah. And at that point, you just have to guess what your opponent's going to do. And if you guess, if you rock, paper, scissors wrong... You just lose. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it it makes, and I think it's totally fine to bring like these these meta breaking decks into tournaments. So like that's what I yeah. like to do, right? Like you want to like yeah, 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 subvert yeah, yeah. the expectations of the gem roulette, right? And yeah. be like, I'm the person with, I'm the person with the riptide, for example. That's ex- that's exciting, but like I feel like something so polarizingly opposite, like. Combo Asilio versus, and I know it's not like truly fatigue, but like a more fatiguey, slower uh, counter blessings Asilio, uh, or yeah. at least if it's not, it's it's like a different kind of combo. It's just it really it really muddles uh what what the perspective of a deck to a person. It's like I don't know how to prepare for this and hero um, identity too, right? Like I think yeah. that is Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's a good point. Go ahead. So, yeah, I and I don't know if they will do anything about counter kind of blessings. I feel confident that most decks can deal with it in one way or another if you can prepare for it. Um I don't love that it's generic. I think generic is probably the biggest mistake. If I, if if it if it is a mistake, it's that it's generic. Yeah. Um but it's a little tough I, to yeah. make this card not a generic because of what it does. So yeah, like I mean, if you so, I feel like I feel like with counter blessings, 
one of three things is just going to happen, and we're just going to have to wait and find out. And it's going to be knowing what LSS's opinion is on it. And their opinion is either going to be, okay, no, maybe you're right. It, this should get banned, or at least put on a ban watch list, and we'll watch it a little more, and then maybe ban it. Or they're like, no, it's actually completely fine. They still think it's completely fine. We'll get over it eventually. It'll be the same thing as seeing Cadaver's Contraband. Somebody plays that card, and you're like, an arcane staple showing back <laughs> up in your deck. What the frick? Uh, uh, or, or we see that this is one of their things that I feel like they like to do a lot. And it's very subtle is they're like hinting at a future class and it's not next set, but the next, next set is a cleric or something like that. And then, and then it ends up being a card for that class. And then in maybe in that class, it's not oppressive. And then people only think about it in that class. But I will say the, I think the one problem I have with it is that it, it, there are many options for the silver bullet. I just don't like the silver bullet theory of building silver bullet cards and then problem cards that need a silver bullet or vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, because well, what do I do? Put poison the well in every single deck for the rest of time? Do I have to think about that in deck building every single time I build a deck? Is I'm like, oh, well... Town Your Blessings is technically always a deck as a card that doesn't rotate and is in generic. I better put a single Poison the Well in every deck forever. Is yeah. that like just what we do? Yeah, and all of a sudden we have this 77 card, or like whatever, 79, yeah, 77 yeah. card deck list Preset. that you build yeah, rather uh, than uh, the 80. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. I, I I'll, I'll be really interested to see what LSS does about it. Certainly, uh, worlds. I think it was kind of bound to at least sneak into the top eight with uh, X amount at least of copies. A bit. And what yeah. was it? It was eighteen copies of of it. In I mean, it's it was eight. two decks. Yeah, yeah two so. decks. So like that is definitely worth considering. And and we saw a bunch of different heroes play it. So I don't know. I, I think this deck or this game is at its best when it's not so homogenized, right? Uh, like when you feel like I am the trap ranger, yeah. I am the, you know, shadow brute when doing crazy stuff. Characters have their own identities yeah. and even classes, right? So like there's been metas where it's like, we got five different heroes in top eight, but three of them, three of those five heroes are room blades. And it's like, you know, or guardians or something like that. And it's like, shh. Sure, there's different heroes, but there's like a lot of the same classes, or they're doing a lot of the same things, or they they all have belittle in them or something. Um, belittle being a different case, but like, yeah, I mean, only two in top eight is like on the cusp of me thinking about it more. Like, if zero went into top eight, I forget the card exists. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if 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 one got into top eight, that's what I expected. If three were in top eight, I would be concerned. Sure. And right now I'm like, I don't know. I don't hate the card. I know a lot of people hate the card. I just want to see what LSS think. And I, I want LSS to take a, a second look at it. And, uh, or a third look, I guess at this point and, uh, tell me what they think about it. And if they're still cool with it, I think I'm cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I trust, I trust the process to a certain extent. So we'll see. And speaking of the process, <laughs> And segues <laughs> the hunted. Yeah. We have a new set coming out, William, <laughs> and we're being hunted. The hunter has become the hunted. No, no, wait. Versa. I I want to be the hunter. I think in, <laughs> in in the in the dynamic of the two, I think so, I'd at least want to. One of us sounds is a little hunted. safer. Okay, I, I, I think <laughs> so. We're returning to Volcor, folks. Yes. Uh, set three technically of Volcor technically, or and because we had Dynasty. Yes, uprising. I I would go with yes. I would say it's probably that, set two and that a half. or yeah, that Maybe. or it's just set two, and then Dynasty was just one point five. Yeah, but we but did get the regicide happening in Dynasty, so at I least in terms no, of lore wise, yes, set three definitely. Lore definitely. wise, this is set three kind uprising. of. Or at least kind of the, the second act of the story, yeah. right? Dynasty yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of ends. Ooh, maybe Dynasty, the climax to the, the first part of the story. We are now in the second part, however yeah. you want to describe it. So Arachne does Arachne things, 
kills the emperor. Now, the classic so, Arachne. Classic Arachne. Now, Volcor's like, well, that was kind of not chill. We are going <laughs> to hunt you down, Arachne. So we have. Not cool, bro. <laughs> So we had, well, I think we do have both talents now, but uh, they've only really officially shown us for the set uh, that we're going to have two draconic characters, Syndra yeah. and Fang, a dr- another draconic ninja, as well as a draconic warrior. We don't know what they do, but uh, we, we've we seen some of the uh, uh, cards and mechanics yeah. so far there's going to be these fealty tokens not to be confused with frailty tokens oh they and, will and they uh, will 100 percent. there will be a reddit post where someone is like i don't understand why you want to generate these frailty tokens for yourself <laughs> and it's like no 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 no, no, no. fealty <laughs> fealty so these basically <laughs> uh they you can pop them your next attack is draconic right so the the main theme of uprising draconic stuff was you know your x amount of draconic chain links yeah get paid off yeah yeah, yeah. etc etc so we're gonna have more of that obviously and we are we don't really know a ton about what either character is going to do but we have seen some uh assassin cards so we know that maybe arachne is back I mean, the the we have we've seen the uh, the alt art of something, which is Arachne solitary confinement grown up as yeah. Arachne slipped through the cracks in really edgy writing. Um, but notably, Zoomer Arachne, uh, it is Chaos Assassin, so that would be the second talent that we're getting, and sure. notab- also notably, the solitary confinement text has moved from your first stealth attack each turn gets go again to the first stealth attack each turn. Gets yeah. Go yeah. Again. Yeah. So it is chaotic, right? I love that. Sure. That's on brand. So if you're playing in a mirror match or whatever, you're playing against another assassin. Hey, all your yeah. stealth cards are also going to get uh go again to start with, which seems really risky. At least in with this adult hero. Yeah. At least. Yeah. With the adult hero. So like, a lot of this, what we have right now is is obviously conjecture because mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. Twenty cards have been spoiled so far. It's not been a whole lot, mm-hmm. but it's enough to like make the brain sparkle a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the top. I guess um, the mechanics that seem to be going on in this set right now is you can mark heroes, and I assume they're like marked for death. And the idea is. Uh, you are marked until an opponent hits you. So it's probably going to be like, I don't know, if you hit a marked hero, or if a marked hero takes damage, they take three extra damage or something mm-hmm. like that. And I have a feeling that, uh, because we we learned a little bit about maybe a mechanic that Syndra, the ninja, wants to do. I have feeling that Fang is probably going to be focused on marked specifically. Yeah. And I feel like Syndra is going to be more focused on fealty because she has cards like Aspect of the Dragon Claw, which say when this attacks, if it's draconic, because it's not draconic, it's just a ninja card, uh, it gains when this hits, uh, destroy all cards in their arsenal. And so fealty turning cards into draconic cards, I feel like she's going to be making fealty tokens, making her non-draconic cards draconic, and then getting upside for that. We have seen no such combination with the uh warrior cards that have been announced but they did announce marked which seems like another draconic thing to do and so mm-hmm. my assumption is that one's gonna lean towards marked and the other one's gonna lean towards fealty also like i i i, I think that's how that's gonna turn out we'll have to see yeah um it's yeah it's gonna be interesting because i mean we we did see that there's some contract stuff returning yeah. that 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 pays off for marked right uh specifically this is very oh, limited that focus it's so like yeah. for for example defang the dragon is like the classic stealth oh, stats that. a red yeah, zero yeah. 
cost stealth card. With I three, already forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, three attack, three block, <laughs> and has stealth and contract. And it says you are contracted to hit a marked hero named Fang. So only against the other um, hero named Fang is this going to be good. And whenever you complete this contract, draw a card. So That's awesome. So it's going to have stuff within the set that, that really cares about marked um, by name, which is pretty interesting. Now, mm-hmm. we, we can't really figure out what's going on with the set completely. No. But we did see these marvels. They showed these marvels yeah. of, of eight different arachnids, I believe. Yeah. And uh, it's clearly like the flip side of something or, or like a payoff for playing yeah. something. Not unlike uh, maybe even a chi or something like that. We can't mm-hmm. really read what the um, the subtext was. And yeah, it's they, all, they blurred it out a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all different arachnids. Uh, coinciding with different kinds of spiders on brand and that is going to be interesting because well is it is it all different arachnids you can play or is arachne going to be shape-shifting and the main question is on the hunted page on fabtcg.com slash en slash article slash hnt slash <laughs> if anybody's following yeah. along at home, I'm follow- typing it in. Got it. <laughs> the Blitz Deck Collection, uh, which you had mentioned earlier. Oh Blitz yeah, has oh yeah. I was gonna bring this up if you weren't. Go ahead. Four different Blitz decks: Syndra, Fang, Question Mark, Question Mark. And then, or? if you go to the hero section of the the mothership here. You see the art for Syndra, you see the art for Fang, and we see the art for, assumedly, the regular art of Arachne slip through the cracks. Possibly. It's question mark, question mark, question mark as well. Mm-hmm. What are those two Blitz decks? Yeah. Is that it two Chaos is Heroes? Interesting. Because um, it would be... It would be... It would be different mm-hmm. if... Uh, we ended up getting, like, what if they did two assassins in the set? You have two assassins, a warrior, and a ninja. That would be kind of interesting. But also, like, um... So here's here's my thought, is... Uh, we're gonna go back a bit. Arachne, uh, slip through the crack, says, the first attack with stealth each turn gets go again. They have also made a point to make sure everyone is aware, because I think Joshua Scott made this a point. It definitely is not one-sided. It is not just your hero. It is all the heroes at the table. Mm -hmm. Their first stealth attack gets go again. Why would you point that out? Why would you bring that up to me? Why would, why, why do you have to say that right now? Like my impression is from seeing all the marvels of Arachne, like the six or seven different marvels of Arachne. uh, You got a new talent called chaos. Uh, stealth attacks get go again regardless who's attacking I have a feeling it's like we're going to be seeing some shenanigans we're going to be like seeing some kind of like multi-hero demi-hero ally maybe like there's going to be more than one thing on your side of the table playing stealth cards each turn that would be kind of neat or that would be that'd be crazy Maybe some she- Shyana stuff going on here. You know, maybe I believe that she showed up in a lot of the lore articles around Uprising and then Shyana killed the king and after then, she got pissed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we don't really know what it's going to be. And there's going to be a lot of talk about it in, in the coming weeks before we really do know. It is very exciting to go back to Volcor here. Uh, notably, no, no Dromai replacement. Uh, but we got the Phi replacement before the Dromai yeah. replacement. I think they had banked on Phi, possibly LLing. Uh, he looked really good with stubbies. Yeah, he, yeah. He looked really good. And and then, like, he's also very relatively close. He did win the World Championship last year. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to see. I think Draconic Warrior is very exciting. I think Draconic as a... As a uh, talent is is very neat and kind of like 
it really cares about doing all the same stuff. Yeah. Where like, I think like lightning, it cares about that to a certain extent, especially as silly as we talked about earlier and like earth, it's like, all right, here's this nice payoff for you playing earth cards, but you don't even mm-hmm. have to like, it, it feels I mean, like weird to yeah. not play draconic cards in like Droma or Fi, And I imagine the same will yeah. be for, um, Fang and Syndra. Two like more lightning. Thi- oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Two more. I think thi- we both have things we want to talk about. Oh yeah. Ahead. Two more things I want to talk about, about <laughs> Fang and Syndra. Notably, yeah. and we you can look at some of the the spoiled cards on February, but um, notably, it's going to be a dagger warrior. So yeah, I think they even mentioned Quicksilver Dagger was kind of the inspiration here for Fang. Fang is the the warrior, and Syndra. Am I getting this right? Am I? Yeah, Syndra. Oh yeah, Syndra has Syndra with a C. Uh, Syndra's with the uh, with the, the kunais, the, the yeah, kind of throwing like daggers. So that is something that's going to be also really cool. That maybe we just can get the flick knives ability. The flick knives ar- archetype. Yeah. Oh, that'd be sick. Um. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about, or I had a couple of things actually. Um. Fang is not our first draconic warrior, as you know. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> He's also not our first royal draconic warrior. Oh, because they are also royal. That They're is royal. Uh, something I totally skipped. They're past. royal. Sidra and Fang are royal, which I actually, I feel like. So, my thing about the fact that chaos seems to. It's only on this adult hero card, as far as we understand so far. And there seems to be a lot of shenanigans, maybe with multiple attacks or something like that. I could see it being a Demi hero. I honestly, my hot take right now is I think we're going to see more uh, synergy for the Royal mechanic than we are going to see for the chaos mechanic. Cause I think my current impression is chaos. Arachne is like uh tackle of awesome being shadow. Like it's just kind of a, oh, okay. maybe sometimes it is like, it's more of like a flavor thing, but I, I Royal could also be that way. We don't know yet. So, um, yeah, it should the be. other, th- yeah, go ahead. Oh no, it should be really interesting. What were you going to mm-hmm. say? Uh, another thing I want to talk about is, uh, we briefly mentioned it. Uh, these contract cards are pointing out specific marked heroes. And I think that's going to be exciting for limited. Oh yeah. Like in limited, you're just going to be like, okay. Or, like, even when drafting, you're going to be thinking, okay, so I got a couple of these that kill Syndra, but I don't have any that attack Fang yet. Maybe I pick up this one over that one. Like, deciding which one to choose. What if Fang is a more popular deck? Do you pick up the Mark Fang cards before you pick up the Mark Syndra cards? Um, And so calling out specific heroes like that, I think, is really interesting, and it's good. I think it's going to be really good for limited. I also think it's going to be very hype for competitive. You imagine we're at a battle hardened top eight and it just happens to be Arachne versus Syndra. And he just happens to cite in the card that draws a card when it hits Syndra. That's going to be the hypest thing in the world. Um, and I also think marked is going to be really interesting for UPF. Cause it's going to be like, you can mark a guy and then maybe somebody else at the table destroys the mark because it's whenever they get hit. Oh yeah, uh, that's true. Marked. Um, and then I think the last thing I was going to bring up was uh, Frick. Oh, uh, you brought it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up your point for you. Uh, okay. <laughs> this, is a, this is another set that we're getting with Ninja and Assassin in it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it seems soon. It does seem soon. Yeah, yeah, That's it's really why soon. I am, I am hoping for some shenanigans in terms of what that maybe other like other hero texts are going to be. And it does seem mm-hmm. like they have something up their sleeve. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe really the only two new heroes we actually see are Syndra and Fang. So it might just be old Arachnes. Yeah. Old Arachnes perhaps. And then cause, cause uh, it they've, has, they've done it before, like with Benji or well, I guess a better example is Katsu, where they brought mm-hmm. Katsu back for Outsiders. Yeah, so I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be wowed. You know, I think it's going to be really cool. And, and to be honest, I really love what I'm seeing 
with the warrior stuff specifically. Um, Jagged yeah. Edge is is pretty exciting. I uh, heard strong. Yeah, well, it's just it's just so good for like. The Enigma matchup, it says... It's good for the class, yeah. Yeah, it's a one-cost warrior attack reaction. Blocks three. Target weapon attack gets plus three. And damage this would deal can't be prevented. That's huge. So they are looking at... And that's just regular warrior. It's pretty nice. So they're looking yeah. at the class and they're saying, all right, we we need to give warrior more more tools and I'm, I'm all for it. Rather than just like, okay... It's going to be hatchet, hatchet, um, take a counter off of uh thing. Like, not just the grind out. Yeah. We want to do I, cool stuff. Yeah. I also think Ninja Assassin is good. Ninja Assassin, all three of them, Ninja Assassin Warrior, all have a common trope, which is they do all have class-specific attack reactions. Mm -hmm. And I think... This is good going into a limited set because just like we've seen in Rosetta, the more synergy you see between the three heroes leads to a more interesting draft process where it feels like every pick of the draft matters, which is something people have complained about a lot in Flesh and Blood drafts is sometimes you feel like you're locked in pick three, pack one. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, if you have an Earth card late in pack two, or if you have two earth cards or I don't know, like it's, it's interesting because there's so much overlap between the heroes and Rosetta. There's hardly any cards that go to one hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unlike in Monarch where like you see a shadow brute card and you're like, well, that just goes in Levia. Whereas you see an earth card in Rosetta and you're like, okay, so a couple of people are fighting over this. Yeah. Um, and I think these three classes have a lot in similar, like in common between the three of them. And will be really good for the draft format to have that kind of synergy between the classes. That's why I don't think I care as much if Assassin Ninja comes together again. Because uh, they are similar in some ways. Like, they're definitely different in some ways, but they're definitely similar in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I want to I see them make a new ninja that doesn't feel broken. So, like, I, I'm, I'm, up, <laughs> I'm up for them. <laughs> nuh -uh. Ninjas like, come out of the set broken. That's how yeah. it. That's how it, That's part of their class identity. I, it is tough. I mean, it's just naturally what ninja wants to do. Oh, attack a billion times. Yeah, 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 yeah. sounds good. <laughs> um, all right, we do have some listener questions. Then we got to say goodbye. These could be submitted on the Buds Discord. Please check it out. It's in the show notes below. First comes from Jeff O, who asks, "How does William consistently come up with the funniest shit I've ever seen?" One, Jeff, I appreciate you, <laughs> Jeff O. Uh, I, I've always liked to lighten the mood with comedy, spark, drop a few jokes in everywhere. And so specifically, I assume they're talking about uh, the project videos I've been doing lately, which are like these shorter 10, 20 minute videos that uh, are cram packed with as many jokes as I can put in. Uh, that's just it. I just try to ram as many jokes into it as I possibly can. And also when it comes up to like, it, it could just be on how do I, how do I make the videos funny? But I think like a part of this is, you know, the absurdity of the videos, right? Scratch and sniff playing cards. It's, I, I'm not taking full credit for that. That's a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. um, I reach out to certain people and I'm like, Hey, do you have any ideas for things I could do? And they'll give me an idea and it's terrible. And then I'll think about it for like a few days. And I'm like, but what if, what if not a video where I just put Verdance's feet in my nose? What if actually we 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 fleshed that out a little bit more? We made it like scratch and sniff cards. Like, um, whoa, whoa, take it easy. So, I already hear the Reddit commenters <laughs> going crazy. Com commenters on this video, actually. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Uh, they're coming for you now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I plead the so fifth. I yeah <laughs> the I think. Uh, it's definitely when it comes to the the video ideas, it's a it's a collaborative process. The Table Pit is actually a group of uh, oh geez, how many people are we now? One, two, three, four, five, six. The Table Pit is six, maybe seven people now. Like it's it it takes a village to play UPF. So uh, I also lean on them for ideas and videos, and that's where I come up with the the wacky crap. A rising tide rises all ships or something yeah. like that. Capolo yeah. asks, has anyone ever told you that you look like Max Fosh? 
Do you take inspiration from him in your YouTube content? I'll be honest with you. I don't know who Max Fosh is. Well, actually, they're like a really big... Um, Max Ferocity is actually a really big... Uh, uh, cosplayer in the Flesh and Blood community, oh, no, and no, I really I know, appreciate her work. And... I know who Max is. I don't know who Max Fosh is. Uh, I never heard of him either. Uh, I did look up a video uh, of them after I saw this question, and uh, I think he's a member of the royal family or something. I don't know. Uh, I will say, uh, I don't take inspiration from him because I hadn't heard of him, uh, but I do. When it comes to making videos, uh, I steal a lot of bits and themes from other people because like i i watch i watch content creators like william osman donkey loading ready run travis gafford uh magic the noah and it spans all different kinds of hobbies and and styles of videos and whatever and like when i'm making videos i'm i'm typically i'm watching somebody else make a video i'm like dang that's really good or funny or interesting or i want to do that and then i like put the flesh and blood slash the table pit spin on it and change it up a bit. Um, Cause I want to make videos that I would want to watch. And so I try to make videos similar to content creators. I like to watch um, like how a uh, uh, pit against is just a rip off of uh, the, the bud rush bellow. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. No, no. I mean it's 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 different. I was thinking about your show a bit when I was thinking of that. I was like, man, I want to do a Colin show. And then I was watching more of Travis Gafford's content. And then I was like, oh, you know what? This reminds me of. This reminds me of uh oh that show on Fresh and Buds. What is it called again? And I went back and I watched some of those videos. Um, well, because you do you, you you talk to the audience a lot when you when you did that. Yeah, you uh, take a look at chat. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that was just honestly. I was watching a lot of uh, Double Toasted, which is like a like a movie review channel, oh, okay. Twitch Twitch account, yeah, yeah. and they do live shows, and and I don't know, I just like the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all about the vibe. Yeah, and so that's where uh, that's who I take inspiration from. It's just there's a bunch of content creators. I want to make videos like them. I want to make good videos like they're good videos. Amen. We want to make good videos. Mr. Viz doesn't ask a question, but states Omni token. So I did a video where I created the Omni token, which is all the tokens. <laughs> uh, you you, you the, like doing yeah. a, a Frankenstein's monster type <laughs> thing. I, I think I like being Frankenstein. Um, <laughs> Like uh, I like I like these project videos. I like working on these project videos. There's a lot of YouTube videos, YouTube ch uh, channels I watch where they do the. They're like makers. They make things. Like uh, uh, I'm blanking on it now that I have to think about it. But like the idea is like I have these little projects I want to come up with, and I'll have like these premises where the premises. Um, okay, every single time I go to an armory. Someone's asking if I have a ponder token. What if you just had one thing that had all your tokens on it? Because there's there's inevitably at most armories I feel like I go to, someone at some point puts their phone on the board with a picture of ponder token pulled up, and that is their ponder token for the turn is their phone. And so what if you just had a thing that had all the tokens on it? I, and that's you, where the Omni token came from. You know, a, a nice Swiss Army token. Is, is Swiss what, Army token. Oh, that'd be Yeah, crazy. that's a good name. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, next question. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you have anything Oh, no. I, I think the, the last thing I'd point out is um, that video did well, and I think the reason that video did well was uh, I, I did a lot of tangents and weird stuff in that video. Like, I light a paper plate on fire and then don't explain it. <laughs> uh, that video was a lot of fun to make just for its absurdity. We like absurd. We like absurd. Yeah, yeah. And the next question, well, doesn't half of it has to do with absurdity. Um, comes with Darth Prentice. First, what's William's favorite generic card? Bonus points if it blocks for two. Also, does William have a unhinged versus educational matrix they refer to when planning new table pick content? Uh, so to answer the first question, uh, last time I was on, I said my favorite card was Fandel's Fighting Spirit Blue, 
uh, mm. because it heals and it blocks and it attacks and it pitches. It's the om. It is the Omni card. It it's is. the best card. Mm-hmm. Um, and it blocks for two. Uh, but also, I have a uh, Demolition Crew signed by Darth Prentice, and that blocks for two and is generic. So maybe it's that card. Maybe. Um, now, do I have an unhinged versus educational matrix? Uh, the I'm not I'm not going through the script scene. Okay, this is a little too this is a little too unhinged. I need to add a little bit more uh, brilliance into this or whatever. Uh, it's more like I try to come up with an interesting, especially for the project for the project videos. Try to come up with an interesting. I, I guess it also is on the uh, game show videos too, where I do game shows and they can get kind of wacky. And um, but the. I come up with a premise that's pr- most likely interesting or educational in some way, or like I'm, I'm building something that provides something or answers a question. Like the premise is normally good. The elevator pitch, the like title of the video is, is, is something not unhinged. And then I make it as unhinged as possible. Yeah. What if this, yeah. And then have fun. Yeah. Answering yeah. that question. Yeah. Scratch and sniff cards. Okay, what's the dumbest thing I can put in this video? Feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we do have one more question from Dead Summer Art. Shout out, Kale. And I cannot wait to do the lore episode for The Hunted. Yes. Oh, I can't wait to listen to it. That's going to be a banger. Imagine you are now hired at LSS to become the new head of the creative department. What is the first thing you add to Flesh and Blood? And what is the first thing you change slash retcon? Um, I'm having a hard time imagining myself being hired by LSS. Uh, maybe that's imposter syndrome, but head of the creative department. Uh, okay. I have, I have an answer for this, which is, uh, when it comes to lore, art, design, etc. This is a gr- this is a great question. And I think my answer is unlike your average middle man uh middle management uh new hire, I don't want to come in and shake the whole thing up. Uh what I think I'd want to do is if LSS is turning a profit they should take the entirety of the profit and dump it into lore. Oh. They need to hire like 50 people to write stories, write characters, create storylines, interactions between things, uh, write a new novel every month. I don't even I don't I don't care how it gets done. I just think I think you need to be dumping people into some kind of some kind of lore department, right? And I'm sure they are, and they are, they're probably working on it now, and, and I feel like because we don't see as much behind the scenes, we just make these assumptions on how things are run, or I do, and I feel like they're not putting as much into it, and maybe they are, and then that's fine. And so I'm not, like, criticizing them for the amount of lore we have, because the lore we have is good, and they do a really good job with the lore that we have, but they could do a great job like they're doing a great job with their competitive scene. It is the best competitive circuit in a TCG. What if you also could brag you have the best lore in a TCG? Because I'd argue it was magic, and then they dropped that ball like five, ten years ago whenever all that stuff happened. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you could just slot right in as the most... Because, okay, so when people get into a game, they get into a game because a friend told them, hey, you should try this game out. Uh, You stay attached to the game because you found out Bai's backstory, and then you saw what happened to him in The Hunted, and then you read the novel about him where you just become, it's your new favorite character, and you just want this, like, redemption for the, the sad little, the sad little draconic ninja. And I think the way you get people attached to this game and it is their favorite game ever ever is because they have these emotional bonds with certain cards and characters and i just i just want them to make us care about the heroes more and 
so they're doing a fine job. They could be doing a better job, right? Like, uh, I, there's there's so many people in in I'm I'm comparing it to Magic. It's the mm-hmm. biggest card game. Uh, there's so many people who are just like, okay, what's your favorite character in Magic? And they're either going to tell you like Liliana because she's like the character that they were selling for a long time, and everyone knows a lot about her. She's got a really long, interesting story, books written about her. And they just they like the character and how it was written and designed or they have some like very specific card that has like a couple of printings like Fibble Fib, Fibble Fip, yeah. whatever his name is. And he's just he's just a really silly, wacky guy. And he shows up every once in a while and he's he's super cool. And that's like their 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 favorite character. But like, I feel like. I'm I I'm, I don't want to like name a hero because like most of the characters have lore right now, but it's like. What if somebody just has a lot of fun playing Squizzy and Floof? Sure. And it's like, that's it. Like, they just play Squizzy and Floof a couple of times. They don't have, like, a lot of, they don't know much about them. They just assume they're Santa Claus and just kind of like, oh, this is, I don't know, he gives presents to Reinar on Christmas or something. Like, I, just, uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel like they could do more with their lore, and I think I would dump a ton of money into it is what I would do. Yeah. Um, well, if I, if, if I was the head, I'd fire everybody. Oh. And then rehire them immediately. As like just, a dominance kind of thing. Kind like, of just kind of mess with their emotions. <laughs> like, I, they don't, I don't know where this guy stands. Uh, <laughs> you know. I, I talked long about this. The only other thing I do that's not lore related is, uh, I feel like there could be a better new player experience. Um, yeah, but that's that's a whole different topic. That's it's a whole so other bag of hammers. That's uh, that's a whole other hammer. Um, bag. Yeah, but I do think that's going to do it for the show, William. You have been wonderful as always. Can you please, for the people, for the buds, plug everything that you would like to plug, and we thank you. Oh, thank you, buds. Uh. <laughs> So the Table Pit is a YouTube channel. Uh, we do, as I've talked about, funny little project videos. There's a whole playlist of them. Um, they're they're like our our really high quality edited uh, videos that are more like your YouTube fifteen minute videos. They're very fun. I I like them. We also have a live call in show called Pit Against, where me and Kevin argue with people, and we're gonna try to have guests on. Like I assume this is coming out this weekend. This will so, be out. Uh, actually, tonight you can go watch the pit against. I it's think coming out it's coming tomorrow. Just, yeah, it comes out tomorrow. Oh, okay, heck yeah. Uh, we're gonna have Mara Ferris on. Mara. And so if you if you want to talk to Mara, if you have opinions that you want to ha- let Mara know about, or you just want to say, "Hey, Mara, I'm a big fan." Uh, you can come in and talk to Mara. We'll have other guests on other weeks, obviously. Uh, so it's a live call-in show. You call into Discord. And you talk to us. Uh, it'll be on our YouTube channel as well as stream it live. We also do game shows that are flesh and blood themed. Like we did one that was price of the price of the price is Wraith recently, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, like we did that with Taylor Crawford. He's hilarious. Uh, and then we're going to start doing these UPF live streams in person gameplay uh and i think the first one that we have the date down for we're trying to get planned out i'm just gonna drop the date is sunday november 24th at noon so we're gonna try to see if we can get live upf on that day and then we'll just have a vod up people can watch upf please please check it all out i'm excited for all that you can continue to find me on mostly blue sky now uh, at Fresh Buds Pod. I still have my Twitter if you want to check that out. YouTube, give the old like, comment, subscribe. Discord, my other podcast, Fresh Juice. And, you know, before we get to food, uh, something quick, I do want to say it's been a, for, for all my United States buds, it's been a wild week. But I want you to all know that I love you all. And, you know, we're all going to hopefully be okay. But at the end of the day, a bud is a bud. And I don't think anybody can take that away from us. And that you are all wonderful. And if you're feeling 
not so great. I understand. I was not feeling so great either. But uh, if we all are together, I think we will all be okay. So if you have any anxiety about any of it, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I will love. I would love to talk to any of you about any of that because it is a stressful thing to go through. If you are feeling hopeless, we can find some hope together. Love you it's all. It's really, it's really sweet. Oh. <laughs> well, I just want the people to know. <laughs> no, yeah. We're, I, I mean, Flesh and Blood has, as many people have said, the best trading card game community, and I, I think what you said was beautiful. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, just a quick food. What what food. is what's some food? So I, long story short, short I had a I had a foot injury that led to a diet change, and so I started trying different foods that I was allowed to eat. One of them was kimchi. Okay, I've had it before, but now I've had it a lot, and at this point, I'm basically eating it out of the jar with a spoon. Like it is so good. Kimchi is so good. Yeah. That's what I've been having lately. Is I found a I found a a bottle on the shelf that just had a picture of some lady's face on it, and I was like, "Oh, that's the one that looks like it was made by somebody's mom." So I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that one. And I've been eating kimchi. Amen, amen. We yeah. love moms. They're the best. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Also, this is my favorite part. We're gonna because last time last time unfortunately we didn't get to talk to Charmer. We did. That's fine. But. I have so many questions because I have last last time I was on questions, but then I also have this time's questions. I have so many things I was going to ask him about and talk to him about in recent. You know, what? actually save but, it for next time. Uh, we don't have time uh, for them, but uh, uh, wait, that's uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you all and stay fresh.